So the last time I worked on Java was many years ago. I think at that time I learned how to print a Christmas tree using a for loop. That is about how far I took Java. Now I get a lot of questions about Spring Boot and Java microservices, especially in the world of DevOps. So I've worked with many various um, complicated programming languages, but not Java. And I believe as an engineer, you should always understand the strengths and weaknesses of each programming language. So I wanted to see how easy it is to get a Spring Boot application built and running in a modern container based cloud native environment. What I love about Spring.io is that it has a ton of rich information on where to get started. And as a new developer, you have a ton of options on where to get started and what path to follow. And this is something that other programming language frameworks really lack. So the getting started guide is great since it tells us exactly what options we have. So I'm going to go ahead and build a RESTful web service since we're building a microservice. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and then let's see what you will build okay so this is obviously functionality um, that we're going to build and what do we need so we need a whole bunch of stuff installed we need java uh, we need maven and all of these things so since we have to build all of these things the first thing that comes to my mind is docker so let's get a nice little isolated um, development environment up and running <laughs> So since the getting started guide says we are going to need Java, what I've done is at the root of my repository, I've created a Spring Boot Java folder. This is going to be where I do all my work. So let's go ahead and change directory to Spring Boot Java folder. And you can see I have a Docker file in here. So I went and created a Docker file and I'm going with a newer version of Java. So I just picked open JDK 14 because normally with a dev environment, you install the Java development uh, kit. So what I've done is just pick that one, call it dev, and that's our Docker file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say docker build dot dash t. I'm going to tag this as spring Java. Go ahead and build that. And there we go. Our dev environment is built. So let's go ahead and run that. So I'm going to say docker run dash it to get an interactive terminal dash dash rm to get the container removed when I'm done with it. And I want to mount my local file system into the container. So I'm just going to say uh, mount a volume and I'm going to mount the volume into the container into a folder called work. So that makes it really simple. That's a working directory. I'm going to set that as the working directory and then I'm just going to run my image, which is spring Java and I want to bash terminal. So there we go. We're inside the container. So we're now inside the container inside this Java folder. So we should see the Docker file if we do LS minus L and see the Docker files right there. So now we can have access to the full Java development kit so we can get started. So building a RESTful web service, what we need. So we should have all of this stuff now defined in our Docker container. So our dev environment should be up and running all good to go. So how to complete this guide, like most spring build applications you can start from scratch. So this is the cool part. It says we can start from scratch, move on to the spring initializer. So when I was looking at this, this is really, really awesome. Um, there's actually a UI, um, pretty awesome UI where you can define metadata about your application. You can also add all the dependencies and spring will go ahead and provide you with a zip file. So we go to add dependencies and we select like um, web. So this is if you want a web server in your application, but there's also a ton of other things that you can do. Like there's a security section here. You can build like an OAuth server or you can have like a SQL integration or various other storages as well as NoSQL, uh, message queues, IOs, ops, testing frameworks, um, cloud-based stuff. Um, I was looking at AWS and Azure stuff, there's some Google um, SDKs and things as well. So you can define all your dependencies in here. I wish more, more programming languages had this kind of features, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then you can select like your, we want Maven project, we want Java, we, this is the version, um, we want Java 14. And when you click generate, it goes and it downloads the source code to your system. So we can go ahead and extract that source code compile it and have an application up and running but there was something else i discovered 
because what I found was that this whole UI has an API behind it. So there's a Python utility that makes it really easy to interact with this API. So I'm going to say app get update and I'm going to install Python 3, which is going to give me access to that utility. And I'm also going to install unzip to interact with a zip file. And then I'm going to use pip3 to install the utility. It's called HTTP Pi. Now, this is pretty amazing. With this utility installed, I can say HTTP and I can point it to star.spring.io. And this is going to give me all the options. So you can see um, the whole Spring initializer. Um, it tells me all the parameters it expects. So you can say the application name, the base directory, the dependencies in a comma separated um, list. You can also define the description, things like the package name, the version of Java, which is important and the language as well. Um, and then we go down, you can see you, this is the list of dependencies that we can select from and it has a massive list. Um, all the different cloud providers that we can interact with, um, different data backends, Redis um, and SQL and all of those, um, OAuth clients, as I mentioned before, there's some WebSocket stuff here, which is really cool. We're going to be looking at this web one to build web and RESTful based applications. Um, and it gives you some examples on how to get started. So following those instructions, what I've come up with is HTTP, we point to um, star.spring.io to the starter.zip file. And what we do is we say my application name is example app, my dependencies is web. So I want a web server running um, the name of my application and the version of Java that I want. And if I go ahead and run this, it goes ahead and does exactly what the browser does. So it's like fully automated and just gives me like a demo.zip, which I have right here. And I can run all sorts of Linux stuff. Now I can say unzip demo.zip and we can go ahead and extract that and check this out. All the Maven dependency stuff, all the source code, including my example app is all here ready to go. It even generated some tests. Um, it's also got a git ignore on um, what files to um, not check into git. Um, this file looks like our dependencies XML file and yeah, we're good to go. All the files are here so we can start adding this to our container and build up a Docker file and try and see if we can compile this. So I've been reading on spring.io's website, going through all the guides and I found the Spring Boot Docker. And when I was looking at this, they have a basic Docker file. And the, the thing that struck me that was interesting was that all the getting uh, started guides do this they all give you an executable jar file and they give you the maven um, installation command so basically what that allows us to do is take the source code that we got from the spring initializer we're able to compile that using the executable um, the command the maven dependency that they gave us and produce a jar file and then we can take that jar file and bake it into our application and just start it up so if we take a look at the code um, we can see the Ma uh, maven binary was given to us and because we're inside the docker file we can go ahead and just say maven install and that will go ahead and looks like it is going to go and download the internet so it's going to download all the dependencies um, into this docker environment and it's going to compile it and run the tests and then we can start the application up and see see how it goes so it looks like we have a build success so once that is um, done we can also use the maven binary to run the application so we do it like that and there we go so starting example app so there's a process id it using a tomcat server running on port 8080 very interesting and it's up and running so the application doesn't do anything there's no real logic um, if we take a look at the source code um, we've got main java example.java so this is just a little hello world basic application um, that it gave us and we're able to run it so what i'm going to try and do now is um, pack all of these commands and things that we run into the docker file so the docker file becomes our source of truth that um, developers can compile and run and deploy um, anywhere in a cloud native environment so now that we have the application up and running we want to work on the docker file so the docker file is the source of truth that means any new developer that wants to work on the project can look at the docker file and all they have to do is say docker build and that'll allow them to do all of these um, steps that we've just done but without having to know how to compile the source code so what i'm going to do is just exit out of this and we're going to start with a few very basic things so we're going to say work directory 
and let's make it slash work since that's the working directory that we've just tested um, so we define a working directory inside of the container image and then what we're going to do is we're going to say copy and we're going to copy our source code into the slash work and like that so we copy every all our source code into the working directory and then what we do is let's run that command that says um, dot slash maven um, install so we'll take this command here and we'll run that and then what we'll do to start the application is we'll create a, an entry point and we'll create an entry point um, to tell docker how to run our application using um, the spring boot run command so this is a very basic simple docker file that will go and build our application and then run it so let's test that out so i'm just going to exit out of the container and now i'm back on my machine i'm going to i'm going to run the same build command just docker build dot dash t and i'm going to still call this image spring java but this time it's going to automate all the processes that we've done so it's going to set a working directory copy the source code run maven install and then um, do all of that stuff you know run the build and test and then basically define an entry point okay so i had to change the entry point i realized that the maven install command actually gives us a jar file so if we take a look in this target folder we can see demo.jar is, is um, output over here so all I needed to do was to say chmod to give that jar file execution rights and then I just tell Java to run that uh, file and that can start up our executable application. That is very similar to the getting started guide of the basic docker file where they tell you how to execute the jar file um, with Java. So that's what I've gone ahead and done. And all we needed to do now was build that with docker build. Then we say docker run. And this time I'm going to expose port 8080. And if we run that, we can see Spring Boot just uh, launching our application. And then if we take a look in the browser, and there we go. So we're getting a 404 um, error page. That's because our endpoint is not found. We haven't defined any endpoints. So we can easily solve that by following the Spring Boot guide on creating a simple web application, which means we just need to create a hello controller and basically copy this, this stuff out of here. So all we need to do is go to our source um, in our demo, create a new hello controller.java and then paste that guy inside of there. This is, can be our message, hello world. So we've defined our hello controller. I've gone ahead and built and run the application again. And you can see this time when we go to localhost 8080, we now get a hello world message. Okay, so now that our application is running, there's one pretty frustrating part about compiling this that I notice. Every time I do Docker build, I run NV, uh, Maven install. The problem is, um, when Maven install runs, it pulls all the dependencies over and over and over. And this kind of ruins Docker's ability to cache and also makes our build time really long, especially if you're changing files in your source code all the time, like I was. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do to fix that, but we'll need to optimize the Docker file. All right, so this is actually pretty straightforward. So what we wanna, what we wanna do is rather than copy all the source code in, we're gonna set our work directory and then we're going to copy in three files. So the Maven binary, we're going to copy the Maven directory where it caches all its uh, files. And we're going to copy pom.xml. That's all our dependencies listed in an XML folder, an XML file. So what we're going to do then is um, we then run the Maven command. So there's a command um, called Maven dependency go offline, which will pull all the dependencies kind of like how maven install does it but it'll it'll pull it all once off and what will happen then is we can then use docker um, image layering to cache those dependencies so that'll help um, the build go much faster so what we'll do next is then we'll copy the remaining source code files in and then we'll run the um, maven install so i'll go ahead and save that and what we want to do is do another build now this time you'll see that all the dependencies are being downloaded so it's going to take a while for the first time but then hopefully what will happen is all of these dependencies will be cached in that folder and since we're not changing that folder structure and we're only changing our code docker will cache this layer and there we go so once that is built you can now notice notice if we rebuild it look how fast it builds 
like lightning fast. So in order to make our application cloud native so we can deploy it to any cloud provider, we'll be using Kubernetes. So if we take a look at the folder, I've created a folder called deployment and inside there I have a deployment.yaml. Now this is how I tell Kubernetes how I want my application to be deployed. So we have a type deployment file and what we do here is we tell Kubernetes we want two replicas of our application running, so two copies and I've tagged and pushed my image to Docker Hub using this instead of using Spring Java. So that's the image we tell Kubernetes what we want to run. And then we say we want to run it on port 8080 because that is the port that Spring Boot will be running. And then we tell Kubernetes how much resources we want. So Kubernetes can make smarter decisions about scheduling our applications onto compute. And then we also have a service.yaml. And this is um, basically we describe how we want Kubernetes to deliver traffic to our application so kubernetes is cloud native means we can deploy it to any cloud provider and if we put type load balancer in here that means kubernetes depending on the cloud provider we deploy it to um, it will go and issue a load balancer for that cloud provider so that makes it very agnostic you can deploy it anywhere um, because we're running docker for windows here we'll get a local host load balancer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a namespace called example app and then inside that namespace i'm going to apply these deployment files so i'm going to go and do that that's going to create a deployment going to create a service of type load balancer and then what i can do is i can say get pods so we can see we have two copies of our applications running so kubernetes has gone and created two instances for our application and then we can also say um, kubectl get service and we can see it created a load balancer type service now there's multiple ways we can expose traffic in kubernetes we can use an ingress controller which is like a proxy load balancer um, basically an api gateway or we can just go ahead and use a service of type load balancer which will make kubernetes issue a load balancer in the cloud or we can just use a virtual machine port to expose the traffic so in this case i'm just going to use type load balancer which is going to give me this service running on localhost and then i can go into the browser and i can see my application running on localhost in Kubernetes. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a different perspective when it comes to building cloud native applications. Now I need you to let me know down in the comments what you'd like me to cover in the future. Would you like me to pursue Java and Spring Boot? Would you like to see more build and deployments? Maybe something around networking or security, whatever it is, let me know down in the comments below and like and subscribe and until next time, peace.